Hello, welcome all to the presentation Erasmus 21-22. My name is Michaela Rudinska and I'm the head of international office at the Faculty of Social Sciences. And I am sitting here with my colleague Radek Kovac, who is in charge of the Erasmus uh, outgoing students and who will be later on giving all the details uh, of the Erasmus exchange program. We organize this event each year uh, before the nomination process starts so that we uh, try to provide you with sufficient information with uh, basic information about the program. We try to guide you through the administrative process of the Erasmus program. Uh, by this, we try to reduce your concerns and fear, which might stop you from studying abroad and getting one of the greatest experience uh, a university student can get from our point. So uh, uh, Faculty of Social Sciences is traditionally on top of all Charles University faculties in terms of exchange mobilities, which we are very happy for. And we believe that uh, even in this uh, challenging time, uh, we keep this high standard and high numbers and you, you'll be all traveling abroad. Uh, and that's why we are here today, actually because we try to show you that it's really worth it. So now let me mention some practicalities. I will kindly ask you all to uh, keep your microphones off so that we don't have any disturbance. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, so please write them into chat box or Zoom or Facebook. And we try to answer them during the presentation, the streaming, and uh, if not, uh, then afterwards. And uh, let me finally brief, uh, briefly outline what we will be talking about today. So uh, Radek will tell you uh, basic information about the program. He will talk about uh, scholarships, statistics, uh, admission process, uh, also show you online application and uh, will explain to you how to work with it. And then we will show you some uh, inspirational videos uh, to give you some short breaks. Uh, and then we have a uh, colleague, Jessica uh, Grossova, who will tell you more about uh, Erasmus International Credit Mobility. And last but not least, uh, we have two other students who have already been to Erasmus uh, program joining us today. And uh, they will share with you <laughs> uh, their experience. And we have uh, obviously more students who are willing to share with you their experience and we will uh, share their contacts so that uh, you can contact them and uh, stay in touch with them and ask them more questions. So uh, that's about it for the beginning. So I will give uh, the floor mm -hmm. to my colleague uh, Radek and he will start with the presentation. Uh, good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming to our, to our presentation and meeting. And also, thank you very much for the questions you sent me. I will try to answer them uh, during my talk. And if not, you can use the chat box and we will answer them uh, continuously. I do not doubt you know Erasmus Plus uh, program very well. The Czech Republic has been participating since 1997. The mobilities are performed on the basis of uh, 360 uh, agreements signed with uh, 220 uh, partner universities from over 30 European countries, not only EU. There is also uh, Switzerland, Iceland, no, and uh, uh, Turkey and uh, Norway. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you know that uh, Erasmus Plus program is a lifetime opportunity for you. Uh, you can study, you can travel, you can make friends, you can get higher self-esteem and upgrade your CV and become more independent. To fully enjoy this, uh, you, uh, you will receive the scholarship. Mm -hmm. The amount vary according to the cost of living, as you can see here. Uh, Post-communist uh, uh, countries and Turkey account for 420 euros a month. The Western and Northern countries, so in, including the UK, I know why I'm saying UK, uh, offer 519 euros a month. 
some of you ask me about Brexit, so I can guarantee you that you can easily apply in the next academic year. We have prolonged uh, agreements with all the universities, so there is not a problem about the funding. And so uh, I think it's a very good news to you. Mm -hmm. Due to higher cost of living, uh, Erasmus Plus program in Switzerland is supported both from Charles University and from the Swiss government. Uh, you can see the amounts on the slide. Now it's time for the first video, speaking about all the cost of living at Erasmus Plus uh, program in Sweden. Uh, you know that uh, Northern countries are generally more expensive, so that's why I uh, used this video for you to uh, make you calm and make you inspired. Uh, sorry, but we cannot hear anything. Yeah, actually, we can't ha hear anything. Yeah. Super, super, fakt hezký. A jsme vlastně 200 metrů od tvý školy. Jo. Jako student má tady člověk slavu úplně na všechno. Cítím velký levný. Tři mražený pici za 30 švédských korun. Ve Švédsku je takový trend, že všichni si tu vaří, což je úplně nejlevnější způsob, jak se stravovat. Většina studentů si vaří doma a školy jsou na to velice dobře připraveny. Mají mimochodem i veganskou mikrolonku, jsme ještě neviděli. Většinu knížek dostanete v elektronické podobě, ale stejně vám doporučuji zajít se podívat do knihovny, protože tohle fakt stojí za to. Jestli se bojíš vět, tak uh, mám pro tebe jednoduchou radu. Ten, ten strach to je to nejdůležitější, co mít musíš, protože jenom když ho překonáš, tak se někam posuneš. My jsme tady ve Stockholmu strávili tři dny uh, společně s českými studentami, kteří tady studují, někteří pracují, někteří jsou na bakaláři, jiní na magistru. Nicméně uh, všichni se shodli na jednom a to, že je to pro ně obrovská životní zkušenost a jsou strašně rádi, že do toho všichni šli. Tak se nebojte ani vy a určitě vědte, mimochodem víc informací najdete na vědte.cz, tak se tam podívejte a my se příště podíváme do Bordeaux, tak budeme rádi, když se budete koukat. Ahoj!
Mm -hmm. uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, even if uh, the sound at the beginning was mute, we are very sorry for this. Uh, you know, we generally uh, encourage our students to travel to go. The Faculty of Social Sciences uh, traditionally uh, reports the highest rates of both incoming and outgoing uh, mobilities within Charles University, which consists of 17 faculties. So it's a great success for us. We hope and wish to keep these figures, uh, regardless of the adversity associated with the COVID, uh, current COVID uh, pandemic uh, situation. Mm -hmm. Here you can see the figures, uh, you can see they are still growing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you are well inspired, if you are inspired enough, we can get down to the admission process uh, together. You Google out FSB Erasmus and will easily reach the website you need in Czech or English versions. We can do it together now, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, there is a call for applications upon nomination instructions, list of agreements and scholarship. Yeah, uh, here it is. Okay. I hope you can share it together with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you scroll down the page, you can see the basic information about the destinations you can reach. You can see that Erasmus Plus program is open to all students, no matter if uh, you are uh, a bachelor, master or PhD student, or even uh, those of non-EU countries can participate in the program. Mm -hmm. Then there are the upon, uh, there is a call for, info, uh, for applications. I hope you have read it already. And then also, the specimen file for the admission process. Uh, I will show you later how to deal with this, okay? Very important section is uh, agreements. If you open the agreements, you can see all the valid agreements uh, which are available to you. You normally choose from your, inst your institute and also you can use the international office OZS. These agreements are open, are available to all faculty students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From the 15th till 28th of February, so it is in two weeks, the online application web apps will allow you to enter up to three applications. You're recommended, as I have said, to choose from the agreements under your institute and also the ones from the international office, uh, which are common. To answer one of your very frequent questions here, if you wish to apply with an institute which is uh, different from yours, it's advisable for you to check the study programs uh, properly or consult this with your academic tutor. Mm -hmm. As soon as you filled out the applications in the web apps, you print them out, you sign and mark the preferences on top of the first page. If you travel as a master student, but now you are still uh, a bachelor student, please mark uh, master or magister on top of the first page so that I know that uh, you're going to study as a, as a master student. And remember to enroll prematurely for your master's study before your Erasmus starts. Mm -hmm. That's for the application forms. Now you also need to attach your CV, your cover letter for each university. 
the transcript of study results and some proof of the knowledge of the, lang of the language in which you are going to study your foreign uh, subjects. Mm -hmm. Now I will show you, uh, we can come back to the website and I will show you how to order the file, the PhD, uh, PFD file. Mm -hmm. This one, okay. Up, mm -hmm. yeah, yes, and this specimen, this one, surname, okay. So we can take it together. Here you have the PDF uh, file, which will be required, okay? The applications together with the CV, with the cover letter, the transcript on study results and documentation of the knowledge of the study language will be scanned. Uh, you will scan it in this order so we can uh, scroll it down. So you can see the first application. Please uh, remember to sign and put the date. It's very important. Mm -hmm. If you have more than one application, you give the preferences, one, two, and three. And as I have said, if now you're a, a bachelor student, but you're going to travel as a master student, please uh, remark it there. Mm -hmm. Here is the application two, the preference three, okay. Mm -hmm. Then please uh, enclose your CV. The cover letter. The cover letter should be different for each university. Uh, if you are not from the Institute of Economic Studies, where the situation is quite dif quite different, okay. But uh, for most of you, it is like this, and the transcript of records. Mm -hmm. And finally, some proof of the language. Yeah. So for each institute, you will put it in one file. The name of the file, okay, we can come back, will be your surname, underscore, and uh, first name, underscore, Erasmus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it, dot PDF, okay? And please add Erasmus 21 slash 22 in the subject of the email and send the email with the PDF file to the appropriate contact. Mm -hmm. The deadline is 28th of February, 2021. Uh, here you have the contacts where to send it for each institute and for the inter international office. To answer another of your questions, if you want to submit, for instance, two applications for your institute and one application for the international office, you will logically send one PDF uh, file containing two particular applications to your institute contact and one file to me, to the international office, which is clear. Mm -hmm. So the file should be structured like this, the application forms, CV, cover letters, the transcript and language certificate. Some of you ask how to prove the knowledge. So you can mark a subject you attended in the foreign language in the faculty here, at, at the faculty here, in the transcript of your records, or you can use uh, some kind of, uh, uh, some kind of uh, certificate. Now, for those who are studying at the Institute of Economic Studies, please break up your ears now, because there are some specifics to the admission process. Now, let me give the floor to the coordinator Dr. Lenka Šťastná, who's going to uh, get you acquainted with the details. And I will be back afterwards. So please, uh, Lenka, uh, thank you very much for the part. Thank you, Radek. So hello, everybody. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to briefly talk about some specifics, specifics regarding admission and selection procedure at the Institute of Economic Studies. So who do not intend to uh, apply to university universities, uh, which are partners of the Institute of Economic Studies, can have a short break now. Uh, so firstly, if you uh, plan to hand in more applications, actually you are strongly encouraged to do so, uh, then 
you can include only just one cover letter. You, it's sufficient to write just one cover letter, which will contain some general information, why you want to go abroad, broad, what, what you expect from the study exchange abroad, and then you will state to uh, which universities you want to go and why. And this is very important. You should explain why you have chosen some particular universities and what you intend to study there. It's really good idea to write specific courses you are uh, interested in to study in their, their uh, in these universities. Then uh, actually, it's not necessary to attach transcript from SIS because we generate your GPAs from the SIS automatically anyway. So you don't need to uh, attach the transcript from SIS. We impose some specific requirements for students, for bachelor students, who are now in their first year because you know that workload or study load uh, during the first two years in the economics programs uh, is quite high so we want to send a broc only highly qualified uh, qualified candidates so we require these students to have completed 25 credits from mandatory and elective courses at the time of application uh, and actually this this uh, requirement holds also for other potential students from other institutes. And our students are the Institute of Economic Studies also have to have passed two core courses like Mathematics 1 and Principles of Economics 1 or their Czech equivalents Mathematica 1 and Economy 1. And these uh, requirements have to be uh, verifiable in SIS at the time of comp uh, at the time of application. So we need to see the grades uh, in the SIS. Uh, at the time of your application. Then all these rules and all other information is summarized in uh, IES guidelines, which has been recently updated. So I really recommend you to read these guidelines to get all the information about Erasmus uh, application uh, at the Institute of Economic Studies. You can find there also information about matching. So the way how we assign students to particular universities. It's quite complicated procedure. So just read the information in the guidelines. In general, we prioritize master level students over bachelor level students and uh, students who haven't been abroad uh, uh, with Erasmus yet. We also created uh, IES University Ranking, which is actually ranking of partner universities according to their quality, it's just a rough ranking. And it is just indication of what we perceive as a high, high quality university. So it should help you to, to decide where to go. Uh, actually, this ranking was created in the past, several years ago, when we did not have enough funds to finance all the stays at all the universities. So we actually financed only stays at the universities uh, uh, of a high quality. But now it serves just an indication and it should help you to decide where to go. Because matching is quite a difficult uh, process. It could, ha ha it could happen that some students get unmatched, for example, if five students are interested in going to Bocconi University, where we have only two slots available, then of course reflected and will get unmatched. And if they get unmatched also for the other application at other universities, then we end up you know, uh, with an unf unfavorable case. Uh, so this matching simulation file is a Google sheet, which should help you uh, assess your chances to get sec selected for a particular university. Actually, it, it's completely voluntary and it's only up to you whether you will participate, whether you fill in uh, this file or not. It's just up to you. But of course, more people participate, the more accurate uh, it is. So just check the matching file and I recommend you to, to fill it in. All this information on all the links to the, the files, which I mentioned, is available on the IES website in the section for students uh, and there's subsection of study abroad Erasmus Plus. So please check this website uh, to get all the information and check the files. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your part. That was the information for the Institute of Economic, uh, Economic uh, Studies. Uh, in the meantime, there were some questions on the chat box, so I would like to add, okay, if you are a master student, 
you normally should uh, should apply for master school subjects. But of course, I understand that uh, for for example, you can use some uh, bachelor study study uh, subjects. But I advise you to consult this with your academic uh, tutor who is responsible for recognizing the school subjects. Okay. If you are a native speaker or if you are attending an English uh, program, you of course do not have to prove <laughs> that you know English. Uh, MISS program, it is uh, from the Institute of Political Studies. So you apply to the Institute of Political Studies. And another question was about the deadline. So the deadline, the 28th of February, is, bo is for both the winter and summer semester, okay? Because the call is for the, for the entire academic year. So now we can uh, continue, okay? Uh, yeah, we'll come back. So you will be nominated based on the submitted applications, as Lenka said. I think it's um, it's valid for the for everybody. By the uh, by the tenth of April, at the latest, you will receive a nomination letter from the from the international office from me. You will complete your web apps application. So you enter your study plan uh, consisting of subjects taught at the foreign university and their equivalents taught at Charles University. You also add link to the study plan so that your academic tutor can see uh, which school subjects uh, there are and your euro account, okay? The question was if uh, the bank has to be checked. Uh, uh, European office uh, uh, requires BRIC bank. Now they are preparing some modifications that you can uh, also choose a foreign bank, but it but it has to be BRIC, not uh, not uh, virtual. But you will see if the system will allow you to enter. If if so, okay. If not, you cannot. Also, you can ask about if you are not sure about the equivalent, of course, so just enter Zahraniční BS, it's a foreign, out of foreign uh, travel, uh, so there is no code and your academic tutor then will assign the credits. Mm -hmm. Then. When once you have uh, filled and approved, uh, once you have filled your study plan, uh, you will send it to your academic uh, tutor for approval and activate the application. 50% of you of students of Erasmus students forget pressing the green icon. Please press the green icon so that you activate your application. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, you should receive a nomination letter from the foreign university and you will be asked to submit the necessary documents they require. And finally, you receive a letter of acceptance. Please do not forget to send it to outgoing as well. Mm -hmm. The European Office of the Rectorate of Charles University will send you a link to complete a language test. It is called OLS. OLS. Mm -hmm. Please do not, miss, uh, do not miss out on the deadline, which is uh, 30 days to complete it. So now you are nearly through. You will receive the decision of scholarship and you can sign the financial agreement at the European office at Obocnitrach, at the rectorate. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Okay, it's not complicated, I think. So now let's see uh, the second video from Bordeaux to get you more inspiration. Mm -hmm. Just a moment, okay. Vítejte u dalšího dílu naší miniserie, kde se vám snažíme ukázat, abyste se nebáli vyjet studovat do zahraničí. 
už jsme natočili dva díly v Berlíně, kde jsme řešili odloučení od rodiny a přátel, ve Stockholmu, kde jsme řešili, jak je to vlastně drahý studovat zahraničí. A tentokrát jsme vyrazili do země, kde ani jeden nemluvíme místním jazykem, takže se budeme dneska bavit o tom, jaký to je neumět jazyk, respektive snažit se ho naučit. A vyrazili jsme do Francie, do Bordeaux. Ve městě, kde jsme nikdy nebyli rádi, začínáme výhledem, aby jsme si ho hezky prohlídli z vrchu. Mimochodem, vy jako studenti to tady budete mít zadarmo, protože jste studenti a máte všechno. Mala jsem strašná obdobu, když jsem přišla, že teda přijdem na školu a mě budem například rozumět těm učitelům, čeho tam nechci. Je to úplně jednoduché se spýtat, můžete si zopakovat ještě raz. Oni jsou velmi kludní, láskaví a oni to zopakují ještě raz. Tak to procházíme se zlatou uličky Bordeaux a shodli jsme se oba, že to tady je moc krásné. Chéžový. Moc krásné. Takhle už se učím ten jazyk. Třeba tamhle je napsáno Le Van Rouge. Červené víno. Kolik nás dali na oběd v místní benzín? Jak se řekne dobrou půjdu? Bon appetit, to jsem mohl vědět. Místní specialita Bordeaux, kterou jsme museli vyzkoušet kanole. Všimněte si, tohle tramvaj... Studovat do zahraničí jsme se hlavně snažili najít co nejvíc studentů a studentek, protože právě oni můžou být ty upřímní, který můžou říct tu reálnou zkušenost, kterou mají. A myslím, že všichni se shodli na tom, že ta zkušenost je skvělá a že do budoucích jejich životů má rozhodně smysl a přínos. Moji, respektive naši rodiče v zahraničí studovat nemohli. Já jsem udělal v životě chybu, že jsem do zahraničí studovat nešel, tak vy tu chybu neudělejte. Věďte. Já jsem strašně rád, že jsme na tomhle seriálu mohli spolupracovat s Domem zahraniční spolupráce a doufám, že aspoň některý z vás to přesvědčí, protože fakt není se čeho bát a to, co dostanete do života díky studiu zahraniční, to vám už nikdo nikdy nevezme. Mimochodem osobní tip na závěr, ostatně je to naše práce dávat tipy. Z těch tří měst, které jsme navštívili, Berlín, Stockholm a Bordeaux, nám rozhodně nejvíc k srdci přirostlo právě Bordeaux. Možná to bylo i tím, že to je menší město než kdy předtím zmíněná. Tak vybírejte správně, vyjeďte a mějte se fajn. Ahoj. So, uh, welcome back. Uh, besides Erasmus Plus program, uh, there exists also Erasmus Plus International Credit and Mobility program. Stop it. <laughs> okay, so besides Erasmus Plus program, there exists also a, a Erasmus International Credit uh, Mobility program. Now, let me welcome the coordinator, Jessica Grosová, to give you a brief information, okay? So, Jessica, uh, thank you for your part. Okay, hello, everybody. I hope that you can hear me very well. As you know, this meeting, especially uh, and the Zoom talk, is devoted to introduce you to Erasmus program. But I believe that many of you don't know the, that there exists something which is called Erasmus International Credit Mobility. 
And I would like to introduce you in a very short time what it is and why you should actually even apply for it. Uh, Erasmus International Credit Mobility is a program within the framework of Erasmus Plus that also supports and offers exchange mobilities, not only for students, but also for academics and for uh, non-academic staff. But for you, of course, as your students, that's the most interesting part of it. Can I ask next, next slide, please? Why should you apply? Why should you be interested in program like that? Uh, I believe that some of you would like to visit some other countries and countries inside the European Union. So that's definitely one of the reasons. Uh, there are many interesting projects lately and projects uh, which are specified by each institute of the Faculty of Social Sciences. So you will see in the next slide uh, which projects these are. Can I kind of ask, just instill the previous one? Thank you. And there is also another reason uh, why you should apply, which is not actually mentioned on this slide, and it's financial stability, which you will see later, and which is definitely bigger and more interesting in comparison to Erasmus or also other exchange mobility programs. Other crucial information which can be for you. Uh, for example, some of you would like to go through Erasmus program, but there are some uh, universities uh, outside the European Union which you would like also to visit. And the crucial information for you is that you can. Uh, you can uh, go through Erasmus Plus platform till 12 months. So one semester you can stay in one country of the European Union and then, for example, you can apply for this project. Uh, call for the application uh, usually starts uh, in, uh, in March, it's open by each institute separately and uh, what is very important is that uh, the application does not relate only to fall semester 2021-2022 but also already to the spring semester the next year. So if you consider or in the next slide you will see some interesting uh, universities uh, you all you you know that you can already apply now for the next spring yeah thank you on this slide you can see projects 2019 and 2020 and you may see also the list of universities and the destinations so you can see you, you can go to university of montenegro montenegro university of sarajevo in bosnia and herzegovina etc etc as you may see most of these projects are interconnected especially to the institute of international studies with the exception of one university whose project was made by the help of institute of economic studies uh, the spots are limited. Uh, it's not like uh, it works a little bit differently in comparison to Erasmus Plus, but this is something that I uh, don't want to get into much details, but they are spots. And I would definitely recommend it for students who are highly motivated and who have even maybe some reason uh, connected to research uh, or some another reason that you would like to visit these countries. So don't hesitate to, to apply. Next slide, please. And the last thing which uh, I was mentioning also before is the financial stability. And the financial support is composed of two parts uh, within the Erasmus International Credit Mobility. And it's the grant for living expenses, which you may see that for outgoing students, it's 700 euro per month. And also it consists of travel allowance, which depends on the distance between the home institution and the host institution. And here you just may see the table that, that which will show you uh, what amount we are uh, actually talking. But of course, it's really uh, indiv individual and we will always uh, discuss these financial stabilities with the rectorate of Charles University. So that's it uh, from my side at this moment. So I hope that uh, you found something interesting. And if there are some countries or universities which you would like to apply for fall or spring semester next year, don't hesitate to do it uh, in March. Again, the nominations will be uh, called by each institute separately. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jessica. And now we get back to, to Radek to finish the uh, yeah, to and it's now, students. yeah, now it's time for highlight. I would like to ask our students who already been to Erasmus Plus programs to share their experience with you and with us. If you have any questions, please put them also down in the chat box and the guests will continuously answer. 
At the same time, you can contact other students who won't get the presentation for you, but they are uh, ready to help you to give you the useful advice if, if necessary. Okay, so you can see the table with the email and the countries they attended. Okay, so first of all, I would like to ask uh, Boris. Okay, may I ask you first to tell us about your um, study stay, about the culture shock, about the COVID, COVID difficulties, the scholarship, the studying, the accommodation, the stuff like that. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Okay, so can you hear me, guys? Everything is fine? Perfect. So I will just try to share my screen for you because even though I've got like five minutes, I prepare a really short presentation so we have a at least a bit of um, overview, like what actually happened. Okay, I can't, no worries. So um, I will therefore just speak. Um, okay, so once again, my uh, name is Boris um, Vanka. Currently I'm doing two masters on the Faculty of uh, Social Sciences uh, at the Charles University. Uh, one is uh, media studies, the other one is uh, international territorial studies, where I do focus on European integration. Um, so, as Radek already mentioned, I was at uh, like three uh, different uh, exchanges. Uh, the first was in Turkey when I was uh, on my bachelor degree and uh, I was in Ankara. So, um, not in Istanbul, which is the city where everybody wants to go actually, because it's like, you know, a vibrant city or it used to be before before the uh, pandemic. But I was in Ankara, which was like more um, real uh, Turkey. And uh, it was like last semester before I finished my studies. It was like fifth semester, uh, th third year. And the timing was quite, quite good. So I, I still could like, you know, finish at the time and uh, everything, everything was okay. So, uh, yeah, so, so that's, about, that's about the, the like the, the exchange uh, itself, the credits, but uh, talking about the country itself, I would recommend you to travel some, somewhere like outside of Europe, uh, I would say like outside the Western Europe, let's say, uh, because Turkey, it's a, it's a great country. And uh, fortunately I've got a um, somehow uh, occasion to spend their time uh, after the attempted military coup. So. Uh, I wasn't paying for uh, the housing since they were like motivating people to come in the country because nobody was, uh, everybody was like scared that there, something sh uh, could happen. So I was not paying for the, for the housing. And also I've got a roommate from Azerbaijan. He was like a deeply um, um, believer. Um, uh, and uh, so, so the discussions like between the Christian and Islamic uh, point of view of the world was like quite fascinating for me. So uh, not only the country, but also the people that I met there. And also the, the cool thing about Turkey is that like, it's not a Europe, even though they changed their alphabet like uh, almost hundred years ago, and it's not the Middle East. So they like, they do not feel as a part of the European Union, but they are not part of the uh, Middle East. So it's like somewhere in between. And uh, since uh, yeah, I was born in Slovakia, I grew up in Czech Republic and my family spread all across these two countries. I'm somehow have the feeling like that I am, you know, I'm not, I'm not home here nor there. So it was somehow like uh, appealing to my uh, personal story. So that was the first exchange during the bachelor. And then uh, during my master, uh, I spent a time in the UK in Southampton, which is like one hour south from, from London. And uh, there were like three things most um, interesting for me. Since, as I mentioned, uh, I still study European studies. So uh, the first thing was that there was ongoing Brexit. Um, uh, I mean, the process ended this this uh, January or the end of the last year. But in that in that very time, like it was decided that the UK will leave, and uh, there was discussion in the society about it, especially in the society on the, like the academic level. So uh, that that was great experience. And also there were elections taking place where Boris Johnson won and became a prime minister. Uh, and I have opportunity to went to a public debate because in the district where I was studying, um, there was actually a debate between conservative liberals, UKIP, I don't know whom, like five or six people uh, who were trying to get the, the seat in the, in the parliament. 
and it was like open so anybody can can go there so i was like yeah watching the debate and uh getting used to the uh, like british style of, of thinking about the world and that's also the last thing like when you go, go to uk um you will see the completely different mindset than here like i have the feeling somehow that in the czech republic we are kind of you know stuck here and we are thinking what is going on in this small country maybe in germany poland or slovakia but in the uk like their thinking is it's huge it's like the whole world is, is the uk because they used to be the empire um so the us canada used to be like the countries that they founded somehow or they helped at least uh india was their colony so So uh, there is some technical trouble. Okay, so uh, I think that Boris has informed us about this Erasmus Plus stays. Uh, he was talking about Erasmus, and also um, there was an exchange in Canada, which was like uh, through the uh, through an agreement between the universities. But I would recommend you to do so. It's it's quite like more complicated than Erasmus because you have to discuss the amount of money. It's not like is not uh, like they will not give you the the, the the amount you have you have to discuss with them and also the communication with the university is quite different but fortunately canada is like super friendly and people there are like the most friendly that i met and i traveled a lot so um yeah uh, i i was in montreal in uh at something called make uh, best university in canada and like one of the 30 uh in in the whole world so the experience was completely different like uh, the way how the teachers were interacting with us was perfect. Like they just, they were just giving us the floor to discuss. And when something was going in the wrong, wrong direction, they just say like, okay, guys, um, this is, these are the facts. So stick with them, but discuss this, you should discuss. So everybody was going prepared for the lectures. They read their materials and the aim of the lectures were to discuss. That's it. Like you've, and everybody can have like their own opinion, which is, uh, at, at least from my point of view, kind of different um, approach than we have here in the Czech Republic. Like there's teacher and you should listen to him and he's he's always right. It's not the kind of approach that you will see in the North America. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and this is something that you can feel like in the whole society, like that they are not uh, so close, like, okay, Canadians are the ones who are speaking English and are white, but Canadians are everybody. They've got even in their constitution, like the policy of multiculturalism. Um, so the both languages, French and, and English are on the same level. So um, the country was like founded on, uh, on, on this, on this um, from these roots. So uh, yeah, you can feel it everywhere basically that, uh, that uh, yeah, they will not judge you uh, because, uh, you are from Eastern Europe, uh, which wasn't happening anywhere, basically. But uh, in Canada, I, I, I felt like we're really welcomed. Mm. Yep. Yeah, so, so that's basically it. Uh, in I hope five minutes. So, if you guys have any questions, um, just write here into the chat or approach me via email. And I will be so glad to give you uh, any info because uh, now it can feel like it's it's quite complicated, especially with Corona. But uh, I was forced to come back from Canada like one month uh, earlier because of because of the pandemic. But uh, I wouldn't hesitate. Uh, I mean, I myself plan that the next uh, spring I would travel somewhere, uh, even the pandemic. So um, yeah, let, let's do it. And uh, that's something that will improve your language, improve your like interpersonal skills and emotional intelligence, and also it will open your like thinking. That, that's the thing that you will uh, hurt. Uh, every time, but it's so true. Like when you think about your career, your life, your family, everything about your future, like you don't have this, um, yeah. Um, like, yeah, as I said, your eyes are wide open. So uh, do it, don't hesitate. So that's everything from me. Uh, if you have any questions, just uh, don't uh, feel afraid to approach me. And thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Boris, for your positive uh, impressions. I hope that uh, you will uh, release the fears and uh, hesitations uh, with the students to have about studying uh, abroad. Okay.
In the meantime, uh, there were some questions to answer. So uh, as I have said, if you are applying for your institute as well as for the international office, you have to send two separate emails, one with the application to your institute and one with the application to the international office. Uh, then there was some question about the internships. Okay, uh, I didn't want to go into details, but also, oh, but okay, there is still a possibility for you to travel. It is it can be throughout the year. Uh, you can use the practical uh, placements, and there's a uh, you will find them on the website, or if you write me an email, I will send you a link. No problem. Okay, the practical placements aren't. Uh, uh, the topic of this presentation, but okay, you're supported and even it's more interesting for you. Uh, even if you have to work, you will get more money than usually than I have said with the uh, study stays. Then there was a question about what is Ramcova Smova, what is uh, framework agreement. It is a special project for EU plus. Uh, which has nothing to do with you, okay? It's just a project uh, which is existing uh, between uh, some universities about the free uh, possibility of studying of all students. So it's nothing to do, okay, with you in this in this application process. Yeah, and a very important thing I didn't mention, and thank you very much for the for the question, is how to differ winter semester and summer semester. Okay. Once you are filling in the application online, you are asked to put the terms, okay? So it, if, it, if it is a winter semester, please put the 1st of uh, October till the 31st of January. If you wish to go for summer semester or spring semester, please add the 1st of February till the 30th of September, okay? And if you wish to travel the whole year, okay, you will just put from the 1st of September, uh, from the 1st of October till the 30th of September. So that we know how long you wish to go and when. It is also possible for you to just fill in the winter semester, for instance. And if you like the stay and you wanna uh, extend it, you can, you can do it, okay? So you just uh, ask for the letter of acceptance and you will add the study plan you will get it approved by your tutor and we will automatically uh, prolong your semester in the destination. Yeah, so it's not a trouble. And the last question was about the Brexit in the future. Okay, I can speak for Brexit uh, in 2021, 2022, I, because the future is uncertain, okay? But uh, for you, if you apply now, you can, you can be sure to travel to Britain if you're nominated. No problem. And the last question was about the maturita. Okay, school living certificate from secondary school. Uh, in English, uh, I think it's possible to prove it. Okay, we prefer, for example, some school subject if you attended here at the faculty or some certificate. But okay, if you don't have it, uh, please uh, attach just maturita. In this point, at this point, I would just like to remind you of the necessity to communicate with the partner university, is, is, uh, especially with the French universities and Spanish universities, because then can, they, can, uh, uh, they can require the knowledge, some certificates uh, in French, in Spanish to nominate you. So uh, before you start applying, please consult the website. You can write to the coordinators in the foreign universities to get more detailed information, okay? Yeah, and now we can uh, continue talking about the Erasmus Plus uh, experience. Uh, I thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Boris. And now I would like to give the floor to Maria Mraskova, who also yeah, she's ready now. Thank you, and she will give you more information, or she will tell you her point of view of the Erasmus Plus programs. Thank you. Maria. So thank you, Radek, for, for the introduction. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, my name is Maria Mraskova, and I study media studies at the uh, Faculty of Social Science, 
sciences. Uh, I participated in two Erasmus programs. My first experience uh, is from Germany, where I studied in a smaller town called Aachen. It is known for its history and also lies on the border of three countries, Germany, Holland, and Belgium, which is good uh, because on Sundays, when normally everything in Germany is closed, in Aachen you can hop on a bus and in 20 minutes you are in the closest supermarket in Holland. I also had the chance to study at the most, mostly technical university, so I met a lot of uh, people from totally different ba study backgrounds, and it ended with me teaching them about the newest media trends and then teaching me about the basics for of mechanical engineering or what it is the Laplace equation, for example, which I don't still know what it is. Uh, my time spent in Germany, Germany was very enriching, but not everything can always be positive. And I have to say, I had quite a struggle uh, when I first arrived to Germany because the school was not giving us the best directions about all the administ administrative stuff that uh, you have to deliver. Uh, so I would lie if I would say it wasn't stressful. But at the end, everything worked out and I could focus solely on my studies and other activities. I have to say what else was very interesting for me was to have the experience of studying in a smaller town inhabited mostly by students because everything is close. Like sometimes you go to the supermarket and you meet a, a person from your last seminar and you can schedule uh, another meeting or something, which is great. And you, I think also you can build a quite a more tighter group of friends because in smaller towns there is not that many international students so you kind of stick together. Uh, my second time going abroad uh, was to sunny Barcelona. Uh, I chose the city for its uh, reputation and for its colorful culture and I also had been to Barcelona before so I kind of knew what I was getting myself into. The process of organizing this Erasmus was surprisingly super easy. Everything with the university in Barcelona went smoothly well, actually until the COVID pandemic hit. Anyway, uh, however, studying in such a vibrant city as Barcelona was an experience by itself and also experience the Spanish culture was great as well. For me, when I was uh, choosing my locations, my main priority was the language. I knew I wanted to improve my skills in German and I also wanted to improve my skills in Spanish, so I chose these two countries to go. Uh, if anyone would cast, ask what Erasmus gave me or what have I learned from it, I would say studying abroad gave me so much. It gave me a new perspective on many things. It made me look at the, the world differently and, and on the people who are living in it. I have met so amazing, so many amazing friends from all around the world. I have experienced so many new things that I would probably not experience if I would stay in Prague. With Erasmus, you have to really learn quickly and you, know, you have to adapt on changing circumstances. In certain situations, you have to react fast. And uh, I think you will learn absolutely to be independent. And I think you will also learn a lot about yourself. Uh, if uh, you are thinking about signing up, I think you do. <laughs> so I would definitely say do not hesitate. It's really worth it. It will give you so much more than you can expect. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, I, we will be in the chat. And I really thank you for your attention. I think that's that's uh, that's it for me. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mary. Uh, in the meantime, there were some questions about the study plans, so I will uh, answer them because it's very important. If you go through the bilateral agreements. Uh, Excel file, you could see the language uh, necessities. Okay, uh, there are usually two languages, uh, for example, English plus Spanish or English plus Italian. So it is like this, um, the capacity of the university school subjects are limited. So it can happen for you that you won't be able to attend an English course in the destination. So it's very important or useful for you if you know, uh, for example, some basics of Spanish or French, etc. Okay, time to time we have the problems here. Uh, we normally uh, try to mitigate the problem 
for instance, I normally ask the coordinator to allow you to study or to um, to pass the exam to take the examination in English, uh, even if uh, the teaching was in Spanish. But okay, get uh, ready for this, is, uh, especially with French, Spanish, and Italian universities, because their capacity for selective Erasmus plus uh, English taught school subjects are very limited. Mm -hmm. Uh, then there was a question about the credits. Yeah, if you are uh, doing a bachelor study, we require you to bring uh, 20 uh, credits. And for master students, uh, we uh, require 15. Yeah, and the scholarship, if you are studying uh, online, it, uh, it depends where you study at. If you travel to the, uh, to the country and doing your courses uh, online, it's okay. If you are if you are staying online here in Prague, uh, you aren't given the scholarship because the scholarship is for um, covering your travel expenses and accommodation uh, accommodation. So it means, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. It means that if you travel to the country and you are obliged to come back because of the pandemic situation. Uh, you have to give back the scholarship, uh, the certain amount, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. the day that you left the country, it will be calculated and you will be uh, giving back the, the rest of the scholarship. I all uh, recommend you because I, well, I don't know about the situation, the COVID situation in September, but I recommend you to keep all the receipts from accommodation, from uh, uh, airfare uh, to prove that you have been, uh, that you have been to the country and you are uh, right you have a right to have the scholarship mm -hmm. yeah and then there was a question about if i get nominated or accepted for erasmus for winter semester is it possible to postpone it yeah it is possible but you have to uh, you have to approve it with the university because they also have their capacities and they can say yes but they can say no yeah, so please don't do not uh, do that automatically uh, because uh, the capacities uh, are limited, as I have said several times. Yeah, and uh, yes, that's it. Okay, so thank you very much for attention. And uh, regardless of the difficult and challenging times, so pandemic situation, Brexit, et cetera, et cetera, we are looking forward to signing financial agreements with most of you and hope you will enjoy your study abroad as much as Boris and Maria and other students and have a nice day. Thank you very much for your attention and sorry for some technical uh, troubles or bugs in the presentation. Yeah. Thank you, Radek, and me too. Thank you for your attention, for your participation. We are very glad that there are so many of you interested in uh, studying abroad. That's great. Keep on uh, doing that. And uh, we wish you a pleasant day and see you around very soon. Thank you.